Hi everybody, it's Mark again. And I'm working on the uh, East Meckendecker clock um, that takes this uh, music contraption. My last video I told you that it needed a bushing. But it also had that compression spring on it. So I had to uh, work on my tool. And what I did, I had these blades from my Dremel kit here. And I was able to make little slots in my tool to take those compression fittings off. But first thing you have to do when you go to uh, put a bushing in is you have to, uh, again, I said this uh, in my video on, on how to put bushings in. If you start on millimeters, you want to finish on millimeters and you want to check this often. The first thing you have to do is get the diameter of the pivot and make sure it's the pivot and not the other section this is 0.8 millimeters and then you select a bushing in this case the bore which is going to be the diameter of the pivot is 0.8 millimeters so uh the diameter of the bushing and the height is something that you want to worry about but if you have to you can file it down in this case the uh, plate is 0.8 millimeters and the height on this is 1.5 millimeters so it's going to be um, a little loose in there but out of all my bushings, this is the best bushing that I have. So it's, it's, it's going to have to work. Next thing you want is the diameter of the bushing itself, which is 2.5 millimeters. And you would want to take a bushing out and get the diameter of the bushing with your tool to verify the diameter of the bushing and here measuring it several times I come up with 2.3 millimeters as you can see my micrometer which is a digital caliper. I keep calling it a micrometer. Sorry. It's set on zero. Measuring it again. 2.3 millimeters. So don't always trust the package. Compared to your. Measuring tool. The next thing that you have to do select some uh, uh, materials I, I use um, reamers to put my bushings in it's done by hand that's what I use it's the cheapest way I'm not going to spend a lot of money on doing this so this the diameter of this one is 1.3 millimeters and the end of it is 0.7 millimeters so i could start with this one and i already marked my bushing um, pivot hole that i need to bush out but let me get a piece of paper stand by When you go to do a bushing, you want the circle of the bushing hole, the pivot hole, to be 
fairly circle. If it's like this, oblong, then you need to take a file and file the opposite end of the oblong area. That way, when you go to use your reamers, drill, um, um, brooches, whatever you use, it will go into the center of the hole. If you don't file out this area and you just try to broach, ream, drill this, it's going to make a new centered hole in that area right there. And that's why you want to file out this end to match or somewhat match the oblonged area. That way, when you go to uh, uh, put a, a bushing in and you use your drill, reamers, brooches, whatever, it goes back into the center hole. Now, with that said, I don't know if you could see this or not. And I have to uh, get out my magnification. I don't know if you could see this or not, but we have a oblong hole here. So I'm going to have to file the opposite direction of this oblong hole, just like I showed you in this paper to, uh, to make it centered again. So stand by and let me do that. I got that filed away. What I did was take a diamond uh, bit that you can purchase from Time Savers and they fit in these holes and you can file them down. And I told you wrong on the bushings. The bushings height is 1.5 millimeters, which this is again 0.8 millimeters, 0.9 millimeters, something like that. So we'll just have to file it down. So no big deal on that. So, um, so now what I want to do is with my smallest uh, reamer, I want to put this in there and I want to put it parallel all the way around. I don't want it slanted. I want it, if I was to put a tool in here, I would want that tool to be, the, the reamer to be 90 degrees to this plate. And so I want to go ahead and um, broach it out. I said with my smallest tool, and this is my smallest tool. Now this method takes a little bit longer time. I need to tighten up my reamer in my pen vise as it was slipping this method takes a little bit longer time but it can be done there's my first one taking the the next size up which the next size up is too small. So that's what I say in my videos about uh, putting bushings in. You could take these diamond bits, put them in your drill, and that way you don't have to go from one size to the next size to the next size. You just have to... Uh, remember we said the bushing itself is point. 2.3 millimeters in diameter so this will get us up to 1.8 millimeters so I'm going to put this in my drill I will tell you if you go too fast you'll break these off so stand by now you could also put 
your reamers and your drill bit, you know, and your cordless drill, it'll go a little bit faster. But uh, once you get to the point where you think you got the whole, um, the right size, you grab your bushing and you try to uh, put it in. Now, because you're doing this, you're going to create little burrs on the material. So you either take a file and file it off. The proper way is to take a champing tool, which I don't have. But um, I'm going to put the bushing in. So stand by. Now this tool came from my pocket watch days. It's called a staking set. And it works really good for small parts like this. It helps if I paid attention. And I want to turn the staking set to where it's flat metal. That way I don't mess up the uh, plate. You want to keep checking your work. There, it's nice and smooth, and it's flat on this side. This being the uh, oil sink side, what you can do is you can leave that sticking out if you want. But it's called poor workmanship. And again, I don't have the right tool. But what you can do is take a drill bit. And drill that side down. And it's going to cause you to have an oil sink. Now some people would disagree with what I'm saying. That's fine. I don't have to please people. Just myself. I'm going to use a bigger drill bit. To get rid of the excess material. You can't really see what I'm doing. 
and I apologize. There's some people that complain because they can't see every little thing that I'm doing. But I explain what I'm doing. And you still have a little bit of ridge after using the drill bit. And so, again, you could take a file and file that down. Or you do what I'm going to do. And I'm going to take my Dremel. And I'm going to uh, speed up the work. Again, there's going to be a lot of people complain about what I do. I'm not going to go out and spend the expensive tools to do what it takes to put bushings in when you can do it the way I'm doing it. Now that bushing is in, but now we have to uh, bore out the hole, bore the uh, uh, pivot to be put in. And this is really important, and you don't want to go over your diameter of the pivot, or you just wasted your time doing all this. So, uh, when I say you don't want to go over your diameter of your pivot, you don't want to go over it that much. You have to go over it a little bit, but not that much. So, I'm going to use this and board out some. Again, this is a reamer. Afterwards, I will take a smooth cutting brooch. And there, the bushing got stuck on my reamer. So I will have to push it back in. Anyway, I'm going to continue uh, um, reaming out this hole to fit the um, uh, pivot, and then I'm going to take a smooth coating brooch, and I'll be back. There's one down. Now I have to do the other side. And it also helps if you mark your reamers with a piece of tape. That way you don't go too far. This one was a little bit more trickier because of uh, the location it's in.
Now I have to uh, put all this back together. So I have to... Uh, my pictures are on my camera. So... I'm going to have to close this video. But... I got a new video editor program. Hopefully I can combine them. Um, anyway, I hope you all liking this video. Uh, please hit the subscribe button. And may God bless each and every one of you. Hey everybody, it's Mark again. And I'm hoping I can put this all back together on camera. My memory sucks. I do have pictures. But anyway, I was wanting to show you. When you put the gear back on, if you can't spin it to where it does that, more than likely you have a divot where you put the bushing on in the inside and you will have to file it off. That way when you put the, the gear back on, it freely spins. If you can't get it to do that, and if you don't have end shake, then more likely you get a divot where you put the bushing on. So uh, you might have to do what I did. And again, this is what I do. What you do is totally up to you. But what I do works. I took my Dremel and filed both sides off. And now the thing... Um, works so stand by let me put this part back together as I said I took pictures and uh, your most important part is where the spring goes does it go here or does it go here and I took pictures so it goes there and so you could flip this spring around the other way to make this spring be here, but that's not where it goes according to my pictures. So the plastic gear goes on next, then this gear, then the plate. And you have to also put the uh, the flywheel on. So that's why you don't want to put the nuts on quite yet. I pushed it down too much. There we go. And pop the gears into place. So now it looks like it's starting to take shape. Kind of put the nuts on. And this clip. So I'll be back. I gave it a drop of oil. And I got it all back together. There's no play like there used to be so hopefully when I put this thing back on the um, movement it'll work properly like it's supposed to
when this is uh, right side up, it works properly. When it's like this, it ain't going to work properly because the weight of it, it goes like this. And so the spring works properly. Maybe it needs a little bit more tension. But remember what I told you about the clips? I got this clip too close to it. So I need to back off this compression clip. And that's why it's not working properly. So let me do that. Stand by. Now it's got a little bit of space in between that compression clip, and now it drops freely. So now it's time for me to put this back on the movement. So stand by. I should have paid closer attention when I put this together. This pinion gear has to line up with this gear. So I got this gear, this wheel upside down. So now I have to take this back apart to flip this around. And that's why you take plenty of pictures. Um, I didn't look at my pictures when putting that wheel back on and I should have because I got one as you can see here's one of my pictures and as you can see in uh, comparison to the governor fan the pinion gear is supposed to be away from the governor fan in this case it's not it's in the same section and I got other pictures right there so I should have looked at my pictures before I put this together because my memory sucks so stand by let me fix it now I want to explain the setup of this main shaft there's a clip right here one of those compression clips here that will not allow this shaft to go that way there's this um, gear here that when properly installed it will not allow the shaft to go that way and the whole reason i'm telling you this is this gear right here this gear right here has to be set up this wheel uh, ratchet wheel has to be set up so it's in between this wheel on this music piece and the movement um, for this piece uh, um, side plate so in other words if this gear if this pinion gear was wrong it would allow this gear to touch this wheel to touch this wheel if this was wrong it would allow this wheel to touch this plate and any friction you have will stop this wheel from turning let me see if i can show you what's going on 
That's why I don't like this uh, little tripod. Uh, Y'all see the movement and everything better. But when I want to show you something like this, it's hard for me to do. Hopefully you could see it here. When I trip the music, of course, the cuckoo had to quit playing, but when I trip the music, you can see it's playing just fine, and then sometimes it gets bound up. If you watch the uh, flywheel here turning. It worked fine just that time. Maybe it just needs some lubrication. Let's try it again. You see it slowing down there? It stopped. And it's because there's some kind of friction going on with this uh, movement to stop it. So that's what I have to figure out next. It's no longer the um, the bushing wear. But anyway, we're getting there. I'm going to put this video on pause. Maybe I can fix it. Or maybe we'll have to come back with another video. Okay. We're back. And I think I got it resolved. As you can see, the... Uh, uh, dancing platform and it's moving the music drum is moving and that was the end of it we'll do it one more time and then I'll tell you what was wrong That was the end of it. The platform, which is plastic, was bent a little bit, causing friction. So I had to straighten it out. It was actually bent to the point where this gear here was touching the platform and so um, when you operated the gear manually let me see if I can do that without taking this chain off When you operated the gear manually, because there was resistance in it, when you pushed it, there is still some resistance in it, because when you push it one way, it didn't do it that time. It did a little bit that time the gear comes back the other way it's telling me there's resistance still in the uh 
uh, platform. And I think it's because the dancers, their little rubber bushings that they sit on, I think they're getting worn out. And that's why there's resistance every so often. But it does work now. And it's time for me to put this movement into the case. So stand by. I got the uh, movement back in. I just want to show you that the uh, music works. I'm hoping you can see this. The figures are turning around. The music is working. And you have to uh, shut the music off when there's no more for notes. And that can be a little tricky. Now it's time to put the bellows in. Hey everybody, it's Mark again, and this is going to be the final video on this clock, which is the East Meckenbecker uh, Cuckoo Clock with uh, a pheasant or maybe a grouse. My particular clock, as you can see, is a doe. It never had horns, so they make two different kinds. And the clock I've been working on is a buck. Stand by. I have another video out there how to uh, put your clock in beat. And if you can't get your clock to do this, where it touches my finger and continues ticking, then your clock, there's something wrong with it. It needs service. It's out of beat. Uh, there's something wrong with it. But anyway, uh, her clock is working. i show you. That's a half hour. Here comes the hour. I'm going to have to adjust the uh, music box a little bit more. As I got my hearing aids in now and I can hear something rubbing. But either way, this is going to be the final video on this clock. Um, I'm going to leave it running for a day or so. And, uh, and then give it back to her. But I hope you all enjoyed this video. I put the gong in the box, but uh, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. I mean, God bless each and every one of you. After it stays running for a day or so, and I got the music, um, the weights dropping evenly, that's when I'll go ahead and put the chain hooks back on. Um, and put the side panels on this side is so you can get to the uh, music in there and then this side is so you can get to the East Meckenbecker music section here but anyway it's ticking away may God bless each and every one of you